Good morning, art lovers. My name is Jose Garza, museum educator at the Contemporary Museum St. Louis. Welcome to Playdates. Our theme for this program will be Daring Drawings. We'll learn about how artists use drawing to create unique works of art. I will also teach you about a Salvadorian game that uses drawing called Tripa Chuca. We'll also take a visit to the Contemporary Art Museum to see the current exhibition and we'll be joined by special guest, Steph Plant. So happy that you're able to join us. Daring drawings. Drawing. D R A W I N G. What is drawing? Drawing is a technique for producing images on a surface, like a sheet of paper, by making marks with a pencil, pen, chalk, charcoal, or crayon. Digital drawing uses computer software to draw. Common methods include a stylus or finger on a touch screen or a mouse. Drawing is one of the most efficient means of creating images and communicating ideas because of the variety of drawing tools and its accessibility. It is also one of the most common artistic activities. Artists use drawing to readily document what they see, remember, dream, or imagine. Drawing is also used to create finished works of art in their own right. You can draw dogs, flowers, cars, and smiley faces. What is your favorite thing to draw? Let's play a game. I'm gonna teach you about a traditional Salvadorian game called Tripa Chuca. It incorporates drawing. Tripa Chuca or Riding Guts is a Salvadorian children's game in which two players take turns drawing lines that never intersect. How to play. This is a two player game but you can modify it to include more. It can be played with a piece of paper and two different color pencils or pens or markers. Step one, take a piece of paper and write two sets of each number all over in random order. Each player takes turns writing each number on the paper. Player one starts in order with number one. They have to find the matching number and draw a line to it without touching any of the other numbers. Continue switching turns and going in numerical order, trying to reach the end. It is easy at first, but once you get started, one, two, three. How to play. This is a two player game, but you can modify it to include more. It can be played with a piece of paper and two different color pencils, pens, or markers. Step one, take a piece of paper and write two sets of each number all over in random order. Each player takes turns writing each number on the paper. Step two, player one starts in order with number one. They have to find the matching number 
and draw a line to it without touching any of the other numbers. Step three, continue switching turns and going in numerical order, trying to reach the end. It is easy at first, but once you get started, getting to four and five lines, there are anywhere, oh, I did it again, oh my gosh. One, two, three, take three. How to play. This is a two player game, but you can modify it to include more. It can be played with a piece of paper and two different color pencils, pens, or markers. Step one, take a piece of paper and write two sets of each number all over in random order. Each player takes turns writing each number on the paper. Player, step two, player one starts in order with number one. They have to find the matching number and draw a line to it without touching any of the other numbers. Step three, continue switching turns and going in numerical order, trying to reach the end. It is easy at first, but once you start getting to four and five, there are lines everywhere and you can't touch them. The person who touches a number or any other line loses. The more numbers you add, the more complicated it becomes. I will show you an example of how to play the game. First, we will start putting by uh, adding numbers to the sheet of paper. We'll start in order. And remember that the two players take turns writing each number. So first player would write number one on the sheet of paper. Then player two will select another area of the paper to write number one. Then we will continue to number two. Same thing, put them in different locations on your sheet of paper. Then we go on to number three, number four, number five. And for this example, we're only going up to number six. Next, player one will connect the number one to the other corresponding number one on the sheet of paper, just like this. Player one is represented by the blue line. Player two will use a red line for this example, and they will connect the number two. When you're doing this, you can draw straight lines or curvy lines. You can draw any kind of line that you want. Let's continue on to number three, and this goes back to player one. Number four is player two. And then number five is back to player one. And as you can see, the more lines you get, the more difficult it is to connect the numbers together. And lastly, number two will do number six. I will show you an example that has 10 numbers on it. And you can see how much more intricate it becomes with the more numbers that you add. Wow, look at that. Can you make out any shapes in this drawing? That was pretty cool, huh? You can play that anytime you want. Uh, sometimes I play it with my wife while we're waiting for a pizza to come out of the oven. This is a great game for young artists to learn about numbers, sequences. It's also a great way to practice motor skills, strategy, and it's also fun. Next, we're gonna to go to the museum and take a look at our current exhibitions. Let's go. Our current exhibition on our, our main floor, is called Stories of Resistance. And it's on view starting March 12th through August 15th, 2021. Stories of Resistance explores artistic forms of resistance from across the world. Through visual narratives, artists amplify and bring to focus the multitude of conditions that ignite and inspire people to resist. The exhibition will activate the entire museum space inside and out with video, photography, sculpture, painting, and installation. 
Let's take a look at some of the artworks. These photographs are of our opening day on March 12th. These were the first visitors to our exhibition. We're gonna take a look around the exhibition space with them. This is our curatorial team. There's Weston on the right and Misa on the left. They organized the exhibition. They're in front of one of the artworks included in the exhibition. Do you see anything familiar? What about these lines behind them? Do those look like anything we just learned about? Maybe the game we just learned how to play. When we, were when we were walking through the exhibition and we saw our visitors enjoying the artworks, you might've noticed that some of them were also reading wall text uh, that was explaining the exhibitions a little bit further for them. Next to every, ex every artwork in the exhibition, there is a, wall label that explains who the artist is and what the work of art is about. I'm gonna show you an example of one of our wall labels that's gonna tell us about the artwork behind Weston and Misa that includes the game Tripa Chuka. When you come to the museum, you will see something like this next to the artwork. It will start with, with the artist's name, the title of the work, what materials are used in the artwork and who we've borrowed the artwork from for this exhibition. I'm gonna start from the top. Uh, then we will continue with a brief description of the, of the artwork that we are looking at. When you come to the museum, if you see anything that interests you and you wanna learn more about it, you can read the wall labels to give you more information. Let me read this wall label for you. Guadalupe Maravilla. Disease thrower number four from 2019. Mixed media, sculpture, banners, wall drawing. Courtesy of the artist and PPOW New York. Disease thrower number four is part altar, part instrument of sound and of healing, as well as a portal. As it is described by the artist Guadalupe Maravilla, Functioning as a wearable headdress, the sculpture can be activated by the artist in participatory performances or sound baths in which an earth gong is used to cleanse the space and wash away anxieties, providing a deep state of meditation toward the overarching goal to expunge or throw a disease out of the body. Maravilla incorporates a specific anatomical model in each portal. At CAM, you can find human lungs, the source of breath that is associated with, vital, with vitality and spiritual practices. Flanking the sculpture on the other side are banners with symbols of disembodied limbs and clenched fists. These are reoccurring symbols in Maravilla's practice and refer to Mayan hieroglyphics. They pay homage to this heritage and represent an ongoing resistance against persecution and trauma. Painted atop the earth gong and surrounding the walls of the sculpture is a reinterpretation of the Salvadorian children's game, Tripa Chuca or Rotting Guts, in which two players take turns drawing lines that never intersect. 
In 1984, when Maravilla was eight years old, his family fled their home in El Salvador to escape the U.S.-backed civil war. Maravilla crossed the border through Tijuana into Southern California alone, escorted by a coyote or human trafficker. Playing tripachuca with other immigrants during his journey became a way to bring individual paths together and to tell a shared story. Maravilla has invited two St. Louis-based Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, recipients to play tripachuca on the gallery walls. This, explore, this collaboration further expands the opportunity to connect the shared experience. If you saw any other art that interested you, you can uh, pay a visit to us in person by going to our website at camstl.org and you can safely reserve uh, tickets for visitation. Uh, you can also, uh, we also accept walk-ins, but you might have to wait a couple minutes if you happen to be in the neighborhood and feel like coming in to see the exhibitions. And remember, you can take pictures in the galleries, so make sure you take plenty of sel selfies. Just please no flash photography. Next, we will, we will visit with our uh, special guest, Steph Plant. Steph Plant is a Montessori trained singer, songwriter, and children's book author, illustrator, based out of Edwardsville, Illinois. Her current published book based on her song, Slithering Snake, has become a favorite in schools, libraries, and homes around the world since its completion in 2017. In 2019, she recorded her first children's album, Moth Wings and Other Things, will feature 12 enchanting original songs inspired by the natural world. You can find more information on Steph Plant, her book and albums at stephplantbooks.com. And in the video, Steph Plant will talk about her book and some of her songs and other places where you can find them. Hi, my name is Steph Plant and I'm gonna sing some songs for you today on my beautiful instrument. I'm a singer songwriter, I'm a children's book author, and I'm an illustrator. And today I've been chosen as the special guest for the Contemporary Art Museum to sing some songs for you today. I love music and I love art and I love children. So this is really fun for me to get this opportunity. What else about me? My favorite color is purple. My favorite animals are otters and giant silk moths and baby donkeys. And I work at a Montessori school with children. And I love being at Montessori school because the children and I have a lot of fun together out in nature. And at Montessori school, we wrote a song, uh, me and the children, about our favorite time of year, which is this time. This time of year is so exciting because new life is everywhere, winter's behind us, and it's not yet summer, it's springtime. And it's a very inspired time of year because there's so many new things happening all around. So we wrote this song called Springtime and I'm gonna play it on this beautiful instrument. <laughs> They're so cute 
and fluffy. I want to take them home with me, but they're wild and free. So I watch them hop around with their family. We love springtime when the grass is green and the flowers spring up from the wet ground. It's so warm outside. Let's go out and have some fun. We love song with some young children who gave me some ideas about what they wanted to add to the song about what their favorite things about springtime is. I wonder what you like about springtime. One thing that happens in the springtime is it rains. And when the rain falls down, all of the plants get a drink and they're so happy. Even though to us when it rains, it's dark and cold and we don't play outside as much, but those plants are really happy. I wrote a little song about it. Um, to teach children about what's called the water cycle. Because the rain comes down from the sky and then it flows through rivers and inlets down to the ocean. Along the way, it gets evaporated up into the clouds, back up into the sky. And then the cycle starts again because the rain falls down. I think the water cycle is amazing and I'm so grateful for it. So when I sing this song, I give gratitude for the wonderful water that we need to survive. Blow me down the river, child Blow me down the river Blow me down the river, child
thing that happens when it's rainy outside is that the moisture in the air causes us to see something beautiful in the sky sometimes, rainbows. And in the springtime, we do see more rainbows because it does rain a little bit more in the springtime, doesn't it? And I love rainbows and I love colors. And when I was younger, I would sometimes have a hard time remembering the order of the colors in the rainbow because I always wanted to draw pictures of rainbow, rainbows, but I would sometimes forget the order. So this is how I would remember it, is that I'd write little songs about it. So this is my rainbow song, in case sometimes you forget the order of the colors of the rainbow. Red like a fire truck, orange like a sunset, yellow like a lemonade. Green like a leaf and blue like the sea, and purple like a juicy grape. Red like a fire truck, orange like a sunset, yellow like a lemonade. Green like a leaf and blue like the sea, and purple like a juicy grape. instrument. This is what we call a classical acoustic guitar. It's made of wood. It's got a round curvy body. This is how, this is how deep it is. That's a hollow hole. It's the inside of the instrument. It doesn't have a hole on the back though. And on the front we have the strings that go all the way from the head across the neck and down to the bridge. Each string is connected to one of these tuning pegs. And these are for twisting. I'm not gonna twist them now because that would make the guitar sound bad because I have them twisted just right. And when you twist them, it changes the sound of the strings to make them sound higher or lower. And I really like playing guitar because it sounds so nice and it feels so nice. And I'm a singer and so guitar is really nice because I don't have to play an instrument up against my lips or hold it under my chin like a violin. It's very easy to sing and play guitar at the same time once you learn how. I'm going to sing another of my favorite springtime songs for you today. One magical thing that happens in the springtime as well after a beautiful rain is that little baby flowers and little tiny plants will grow all around if we're looking carefully. And I get especially excited to be, see the tiniest little blossoms poking out. So I wrote a little song called Little Baby Seed, and it's a song about a seed that's deep underground that you can't see yet, but soon enough, with enough rain and sunshine, it starts poking up. <laughs> Sun. 
song about one of my favorite animals. It's a true story about something that actually happened to me with one of my favorite animals. And all the children I've ever played this song for really enjoy it because it's very suspenseful, which means you don't know what's going to happen and you keep wanting to know what's going to happen. So you keep listening because you're so curious. It's a song about a very amazing evening that I had once with an animal in the wild. I'm gonna play it for you in a minor key. Minor is the way that a chord sounds on the guitar or on a piano when it sounds a little bit mysterious. I'll show you the difference. There's major and there's minor. So a major chord sounds like this. And a minor chord sounds like this. Some people think it sounds sad. Some people think it sounds spooky and scary. But I like how it makes me feel curious about something that's mysterious and interesting. Here we go. You ready? Stop. 
Stuck to my sweater, round and white, a miracle, a great delight. I looked down, amazed to see what the moth had left on me. What were these tiny pearly dots? She had left some small white spots I knew then with certainty She had laid her eggs on me I froze and realized right there She'd left her babies in my care I've always loved, I've always loved moths, but I'd never had a moth crawl on my body before. See, she was up on my hair, she was crawling around my neck, tickling me. And that's, after she flew away, that's when I noticed she truly laid her eggs on my sweater. It was fun. It was a fun day, and it was an amazing time to get to take care of her babies for her a little bit. Take care of them until they were old enough and big enough for me to let them back into nature. And I never saw them when they turned into moths. Because moths are very private. They don't like to be seen. They're only out at night. So they probably didn't really want me to see them. But I like to think they were checking up on me. <laughs> Maybe when I didn't see them, they could see me at nighttime. Isn't that pretty? That minor chord? I like things that are a little mysterious. I'm going to sing one more song for you today. And then I'm going to be done with this video. But I really enjoyed singing for you. And <laughs> I'm glad you got to meet my kitty. <laughs> His name is Albus. And he's very curious. He's, he probably heard I was singing a song about an animal. And he's like, sing a song about me. <laughs> so I'm going to sing a song about a kitty cat. Hmm. This is a song from my kitty, Albus. And if you have a kitty at home, this is a song for your kitty, too. Or maybe you have a friend who has a cat, or maybe a grandma or grandpa that has a cat at their house. This is a good song for a cat. Sweet little tickling whiskers, sweet little furry ears, you are such 
such a lovely soft and sleepy kitty to me I love you sweet little kitty you are a precious sweet friend you are a darling buddy of mine I love you till the end Well, I just made that up just right now because <laughs> I thought that maybe Albus would appreciate a little song from me. Albus, did you like that? Come say hi to the children. Did you like my song about you being a cute, sweet buddy who's very soft with ticklish whiskers? <laughs> I think he liked it. Okay, buddy, you go back to resting. Cats take lots of naps. They're very sleepy. Anyway, my cat takes lots of naps. I hope you enjoy the rest of the program at the Contemporary Art Museum Playdate today. And thanks again for having me on. Again, my name is Steph Plant. And if you would like to listen to my music some more, I have a whole album of my original children's music that you can find on iTunes or Amazon or YouTube. You just type in Steph Plant. And my children's album is called Moth Wings and Other Things. <laughs> I also have an original children's book that I wrote and did all the pictures for. It's called slithering snake and you can find that book on amazon and i have a copy right here so you can kind of see what it looks like this is the book that i wrote if you like reptiles or any animals you'll probably enjoy this book it's got a lot of bright illustrations i read this book for the last time i did the contemporary art museum play date so if you're interested in my book you can find it on amazon it comes with a song so that you can listen to the song about the snakes that i wrote Listen to it and read it at the same time. Slithering Snake by Steph Plant. And hopefully I'll see you again in the future. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.